Punk, Elise, and then the Camille being banned away from Brandini. Yeah. Been his best champion so far. But look at this Echo Fox. Caitlyn! Callista! Maokai? Zach? Both there are up? very, Question very mark? heavy duty things left up in this game. The Zach was also seen once this week, locked in again. And this is like the trade. They're going to try to trade. Uh, oh, they're going to trade a They're going to trade Zach for <laughs> Maokai and <laughs> Janna. Take it away from Adrian. Adrian actually receiving three bans yesterday, or the other day, I should say, two days ago, within his game on Friday. Not many supports can do that here, getting the one he's been playing the most. And then thrushes away. up. <laughs> thrushes up! <laughs> it uh, there's, it too many, there's too many OP things. Uh. The Tristana, possibly the Thresh as well to come in. Give a good hover on the Garon. Yeah. See what they get. Uh, the Tristana, I like it for all tech. I thought they were gonna Echo Fox was gonna lock in Maokai Tristana because you ban two AD carries, so you trade Maokai for Zach or Zach for Maokai, and then you get yourself oh. the Tristana. And this actually, this is a counter to Janna. The way that Soraka counters Janna is Soraka, uh, Janna counters or like trades in lane by shielding, spending mana on a shield, and then constantly just going for some auto attacks, just, right? Right, And then the shield is reactive or you're being proactive and like shielding up so have extra AD. But Soraka just is a battery for the AD carry to constantly get HP back. This is one of the best counters to Janna if you're trying to have a handshake in the lane and say, we're both just yeah. gonna agree to not engage, but we have a better battery for our AD carry. If you lose a trade, Soraka gets you back up, whereas Janna cannot do that. So longer trades do favor Dignitas' bottom lane here, but they're gonna pick Varus which actually gets a little bit back in longer trades because of his Blighted Quiver, as opposed to the Explosive Charge, which we were looking for all tech for. So I like the pick there from Echo Fox to kind of get something back and also yeah. have uh, the E from Varus, uh, the Hail of Arrows, the Rain of Arrows, also has uh, Grievous Wounds on it. So yep. if you heal at the wrong time, etc., there's a possibility that it goes wrong. Get a little bit back. Let's we'll see how Adrian plays that. Ah, but the Adrian special. He always has something up his sleeve. I'm excited. The I want to see how he, he loves fakes out gate. If he throws his star calls one way, the equinox the other way, right? Because the shield's going to be on somebody. So you can pick and choose. Gate has to make that right choice. Well, I actually himself. feel like I feel like you go after the Varus more than the Janna because the Janna will have that extra movement speed for oh, of you. So you throw him at the guy who's low mobility and who wants to, to be able to silence the kind of caster AD instantly <laughs> as well. Yeah, exactly. Even though he's not played as much that way anymore. Shen and Cassiopeia on the second phase banned out as we discuss what could happen in this bot lane. Ooh. Possible junglers and bots picked up already if that Maokai isn't switching around. And Forky another... and one more ban here from Dig. And then another great thing about the Soraka pick is a lot of people don't play against Soraka in, in scrims or anything like that. So this pick from Adrian is just kind of always the one he'll kind of lean back on and I feel like into Maokai, it can be incredibly frustrating. The Maokai W's in, 100% telegraph where that Maokai is going to be because he has to be underneath a teammate of yours. You put the silence pool down. He can't follow up with a Q. He can't follow up with an R, and it gives that person time to react and get out. Key hovering the beautiful toucan of League of Legends that Ooh. is Urgot, the toucan himself. Poppy locked in for Brandini. We've seen this over the past few weeks to actually pretty good effect, mm -hmm. but it was picked against the Camille for kind of counter reasons. Now just locked in here, Brandini feels like it's gonna be what they need. All tech and Adrian to lock in what could be going in that mid lane and top lane now. Yeah, so they have a lot of engage. So it will be the Maokai to the jungle position, which means that you're gonna have decent engage here yep. um, with some pick potential. But then the Poppy wants to get in there and make sure that the Zac can't engage with the W, kind of interrupt a user presence to actually just stop his elastic slingshot. And then you try to get on top of the Tristana to prevent her jumping away. But if Adrian is at a point in the game where he has the guard sensor and all that on Soraka, Altec could stand his ground. But let's see what comes out here. Does Froggen have a counter pick for the mid lane? The Corky with exhaust could work for him, but it's banned away. What is he going to go for here? And Talia? All right. Locks it in. Looking at this dig composition, it's going to be hard to assess how far you can actually go. There's going to be a passive for Strip. There's going to be the, the wish coming in from Adrian. The push are the invulnerability from Someday, as him and Shrimp are going to become Bash Brothers in this game in their dives. It's going to be awesome to watch. Echo Fox, however, has the team to absorb these fights. Brandini looking to be able to stay in there a long time with the Cadian. 
as Frog and Keith and Gate dance around the outside to deliver in the damage. Both teams kind of have the same look going into this one. I like the strategies. Yeah, it's the disengage. It's kind of a, uh, everybody's got some engage, some disengage. Mm -hmm. They got a bit of a powerhouse in terms of if you have long sustained fights, your AD carry and your mid laner will both be able to put out a whole bunch of damage. But uh, I personally will always favor the team that has the Syndra and the Zac ever so slightly. <laughs> I love Maokai, I think he's great. But you mean at some point you favor just being able to delete someone off the map? All right, I can yep. get behind that. <laughs> We don't see Syndra very much getting locked in, mostly banned in that second phase of the picks and bans in League of Legends, but hashtag dig win, hashtag Fox win. It is on the rift this time, and we will have to see going into game two if Echo Fox can bring us into a game three. All of these games are so pivotal for Echo Fox here towards the end of the split, as well as Dignitas looking to climb as much as they can to that third position if possible. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's in their own hands. If they yeah. win their remaining matches, then they have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over CounterLogic Gaming. They beat them the first time. If they beat them next week, that's 2-0. And that would mean CLG would have to, but actually have no way to really get to that third spot unless there's like a three-way tie that's broken. It would be kind of hard to get there, but it is a possibility. But Dignitas just want to push it. Oh, interesting. Brandini starts with the shield and potions, sells it quick and says, no, corrupting potions. Oh, actually, uh, Dig if Dignitas win their remaining schedule, uh, yeah, they would get third because they actually have 2 0 TSM the split. They've 2 0 TSM. They've uh, gone 1 1 against Immortals. Yeah. And they're 1 in 0 over CLG. They've beaten those top teams. They've dropped to like Envy, Cloud FlyQuest. Another number. Yeah, Liquid, they even dropped a Liquid early on in the split, but mm -hmm. Dignitas have beaten the teams around them at the top. So that's actually big for Dignitas as they come into this last part of the split where those are the teams where they would want the head-to-head. -head. So even if a three-way tie occurred, Dignitas would be able to just break that tie instantly because of the head-to-head -head records. They, have a, they actually have potential, depending on what happens in TSM versus CLG, to have a spot where they get second. They could be looking at a first-round buy if they keep going and have momentum behind them. Got to feel pretty good as they lock in this squad of five. Took them a bit, as we yeah. saw the turmoil in the beginning of the split, but a lot of teams this this split, more so than ever, have been switching with subs. So uh, they're going to toss like many, trying to find the good results. The invade, the pressure, they're going to hit it, try to get something out, oh, up, 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 and that, they're going to wait. Ah, he has to, he has to smite it. That was, cool. that was a smite at 16 HP there as well. Like Aiden just saying, no, 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 this could be the game, but they forced the smite out of him which will slow down his jungle route because that was an inefficient smite. Slowly drag them over. You see he's trying to get every second back he can. Froggen's going to see if he can get a ward on just for tracking here since, like you said, Acadian's going to be a bit slower. He wants to be a bit safer now too. Mm -hmm. See what Shrimp can do. As he heads down towards the bot side, he'll have his red. Probably just continue to finish up his route before he goes for anything too crazy. Where, if you were Shrimp, where would you actually be taking your Zac first? Uh, oh, whoa, level two hit first. They're going on to gate. And you can see Adrian. Don't every... walk to him. Uh... Damages. That's uh, how you bring damage to your opponent or your uh... teammate. <laughs> Keith subbed back in. Uh, explosive charge from gate to uh, <laughs> kind of welcome him back to yep. the lineup here. But you can see Adrian. Light things up. Adrian, every single Q is on Keith. He's not throwing him at gate. Gate, like Keith will get the movement speed when he runs towards gate. But when he's up that far, you'll see here, oh, invade. And like you asked me, like, Shrimp, where does he want to gank? Right. But he wants to be able to protect his jungle first and foremost. Yeah, they're losing the top lane in terms of pressure. The mid lane, you have the Kalia, and Acadian kind of had that accelerated uh, early leash where it was, it was just kind of a raptor start for Shrimp, and he got kind of low. So he actually may not be able to do his blue for a while. He's getting controlled here. Ooh. Hit it. Boop. Bone come together. Yeah, now kiss. Looks like he is going to have to use Smite out on this one. Acadian is up, which means he's been going through his yeah. jungle quite slow. Did get his red buff. Forces Shrimp on that one. Mm -hmm. No real trouble, but both junglers have an idea of what's going on right now. And it doesn't look like Acadian wants to leave anytime soon. Yeah, Keen pushed, uh, so he had to back up. And someday, 
two shots into the poppy. We get HP back here after getting that last hit. And yeah, someday paying close attention to this matchup because he got solo killed by Brandini last time. And Poppy, I actually think, is quite good right now. Like, we buffed her uh, a little bit more than people thought because she hadn't been played for a while. Uh, but her Q got 1% more HP damage on it. Uh, 1% 1, 1 more nice for a max tank HP meta. damage. Yeah. yeah, it's nice for a tank meta, but also against Bruisers, I mean, they're not building those early resistances, right? They're building a lot of HP. Ooh, nicely done. Yeah. Got the storm shield off. Nice. Full explosion. But yes, also considering that Poppy got a 1% uh, increase to the damage on her Q, it's actually a 2% increase if you hit both parts. So her trading is just that much better. All right, let's watch Bandini's focus here. Locked and oh, oh that was steadfast good reaction. presence says thank you very much. Yeah, the steadfast presence interrupting Shrimp's elastic slingshot, exactly what you're picking the Poppy for yeah. to interrupt Zack in that mid game, because then that forces him to. He can't really get into the back line unless he flash R's and tries to be interrupt, uh, uninterruptible by crowd control. But his bottom lane is going to be very heavy in terms of... Look at how fast they got that shield off, and they're going to keep going. The exhaust is out. Adrian's happy with that. He can oh, he's get going away. forward. Straight on him. Storm Seal just came back up from gate. Fast Fingers keeps Keith alive, and here's Akadian. <laughs> Summoner spell, spell still on the bot side. Wait, Flashes what, for what, Fox. What? And it is going to be a 1v1 <laughs> for Akkadian and Adrian as Akkadian almost goes down to the turret getting Equinoxed up in a bad situation. First blood for Fox, though. <laughs> yep. That's Keith getting first blood. Altec jumped in. I got this. There's no extra damage there. Uh, if he sticks around, he does have flash. Gate will have to interrupt, but they're being really aggressive here. Tries to pull oh, him back. Oh, no. <sighs> Silence came out, but if you're not on the Equinox, you won't get locked up. Gate and uh. Keith get out clean. Yeah, easiest way to do that on Zack is just cue the minion and buffer an auto attack on the person. So auto attack the person, because if you try to hit them with the first part of the Q, it's not going to work, right? Then you have a chance to dodge. Look at this, the heal came out and the shield reset, and Altec's like, uh-oh, I can't break the shield. He has the extra AD, Keith wins the trade, and then he even blows his own heal to try and deal damage, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, this, the shield coming up right then was the big dis uh, difference yeah. maker, because he didn't have any damage to break it. Whew. Yeah, so we basically jumped in on a, on a Varus that had basically a pickaxe and he didn't have anything. Shrimps out. Nice and safe. Doesn't get stopped up. Had the roam from Keen as well if things got a little too hairy in that situation. But there's a full roam from Adrian here too. Do they keep this? It's just going to be for the protection of pink. Yeah. And they're out. And early Sightstone as well. Uh, first item Sightstone for Adrian on his back. Whereas you can see Gate went for an upgrade and also looks like he's going towards that Ardent Sensor really early on. That's an Amp Tome for him. It does not build into Eye of the Oasis or anything like that. He's just trying to get the Janna into that spot where he has that Ardent as fast as possible. Lock in. Let's see he's playing. Oh, almost on the wrong side. Rocking doesn't have Top. MR. Oh. If that, I think if that last Q had hit Froggen, it would have been very, very close. But yes, he gets both summoner spells out of him, and that's why I was casting uh, the Dignitas game against Immortals, where he was playing this exact matchup into Poe Belter, and Poe Belter backed and got himself a, a Null Magic Mantle at level 5, because he knows that's exactly what's going to happen level 6. And there's kind of like a tax that Cinder puts on inventories early to build MR, but it yeah. pushes your entire build off to the side. So... Froggen kind of takes the risk there, does get all in, and now Keen has Summoner Spell advantage and can just do that again very shortly. So you always have to worry about it. Brandini may feel like he can go aggressive here. Top side of the map has a Cadian on it. It'll be a long walk out for him, but still would be able to get the defense. Someday happy to keep it at the 75% mark here on the push. Brandini, I feel like he's very close to trying to get a dive on this. Someday back to safety. Yeah, Brandini, uh, Making sure that he stacks up to his Grasp of the Undying. Like, one of the things about Poppy is you'll take a Grasp of the Undying and just throw your shield for full value as a melee champion uh, and get that heal, and it does a lot of damage to them. But you have to stack it up first. Uh, actually, Janna back, so they're just trading very heavily on Keith. His gate's not there. But yeah, in the top lane, like I was saying about uh, the Poppy, once you get your Bomby Cinder, though, you don't have to attack minions at all or push. Uh, you just stand by the minions, and your Grasp will start ticking up as you're in combat. Yep. Uh, and then you can really bully him. I feel like Brandini, though, wants, he wants to dismount him and then go for something like an E into a wall. But 
before that, <laughs> you don't do it, because yep. then he'll just, you know, get dismounted as you're eating, and it won't stun. Well, they just said someday I don't see mid, and we have no idea where Acadian is. Safe play from him. He and is Frogger. spotted out by the Scryer's Bloom, but this top turret should take quite a bit of damage. What is mm -hmm. the answer here from Dignitas to get something back? Uh, well, if he TPs in, he may die. There's nobody on that side, so yeah. someday I'll just walk it in, I think. And they're going to have to collapse. It could okay, be the extended he fight. He's TPing in after he waits for the minion wave to die a bit, so that's what they're doing. That was actually good from someday to just kind of wait and then be in a position where there aren't enough minions for them to really dive. Let's see if he was waiting on anything either. Eh. Ooh. Pretty aggressive. Buster shot back from Alltech in the bot side. He's got 1,500 to spend, so it looks like it's about time to do that as Keith and Pot Gate started winning that fight. Yeah, down bottom, though, you do have to be careful now because you don't have TP advantage at all. Brandini could make a play, and Poppy is actually a very good TP flanker. As soon as a TP comes behind yep. you and there's a Poppy coming out, a lot of the times you can just say, oh, we're probably dead and we have to overcommit here and try to get a kill, but you usually just end up dying anyway. But the Poppy can kind of be like that checkmate where you see that TP, you see that TP start channeling, you're like, oh, we're dead. <laughs> what do we do? So it's they get wards for that. It's always a wonder. It's like, do I actually flash? Because she's going to be able to close that range with mm -hmm. speed and... Ooh. The push. Actually, right here, momentum for Fox. They're going to try to go top. Because that turret's so low, they're rotating their uh, bottom lane to it. And on the bottom side, Altec's going to have to push here for this turret. He has the pickaxe. He hasn't purchased yet. He's got 1,800 gold, whereas Keith is going to be able to push on a low HP turret. Uh, and I feel like they just get out-tempoed here. So this is good from Echo Fox. The ward's in. I wonder if Keith shows right away. Yeah, they're not going to toy with it. They're just going to get the few shots necessary. Dignitas pulls back off the turret. And with everybody spread thin across the map, they aren't able to answer with mid where they did have a little bit of pressure. They got beat. Fox was already waiting as well. Yeah, Echo Fox uh, actually had the better rotation there, rotating and finishing off that top turret mm -hmm. just to get the first turret gold. Whereas the bottom turret actually is in a position where if Altec had stayed, he would have maybe been able to take it out. It's about two thirds HP, a little bit less than that. And you know you would have been able to do that. So instead, they just go back. Like you see here, they tried to swap it. Alltech was heading top again. And now they're saying, oh, we missed the timing by over yeah. a minute. And now they have to go back down to the bottom side. It's kind of that, that walk of shame as an AD carry and pro play where it's like, ah, oh, we, we kind of got out rotated. Because you can't see it coming. Let's see, Shrimp goes in though. Hit onto Keith, beautiful job. Who's he gonna get? Slaps Gate and Keith together. And it looks like he's gonna try to keep him with. Does not, everybody's able to situate themselves out of that one, but now it's got to be very, very careful for Alltech here in a bad situation. Shrimp, him, and Keen kind of back and forth, wondering if there's any more Fox members. Good thing they had the wards here early. Acadian just needs to leash it once. He needs to walk up and leash it once. And up, oh, nope. Keen's going to throw it so he can smite it. There you go. <laughs> alley -oop. Gets that one locked in. So pressure from Dignitas into the side of Fox, looking to get the kills before they can get anything on these turrets, really. Just doing it slow, slowly but surely. Yeah, and we're seeing whichever bottom lane kind of gets that early kill, yep. starts winning it, and they got that turret. And I have to say, Gate, this is a super aggressive build from him. There's no sidestone. He's no sidestone. He's, you don't have to buy boots as Janna, it doesn't matter because you have your W, your Zephyr to get movement speed, but he's going full Ardent Sensor after just the first upgrade of his Nomad's Medallion. And this, this is just like, we don't give a damn about vision because we're just going to be in lanes right now. Uh, and that's super aggressive for a Janna build. But, I mean, when you look at win rates and stuff, building and rushing the Ardent Sensor is usually higher. But, of course, that means usually some gold has come your way that you're like, oh, I can get this before Sightstone. They're also favoring the little bit of uh, trinkets they can stick with. Vision and then the tracker's knife. So they're like, we can squeeze a few more words in if we don't have the sweepers yet, but we have to be, like you said, even more careful. Yeah. So there's Dragon going down to Fox. They'll get the Mountain Drake, I should say. And happily walk away with this one. Good organization through the early mm. part of the game to slow Dignitas down. However, still a low kill game. Dignitas may find the way to start working the lanes as they did last time. Gonna be a little bit harder though. I just got a little uh, irked because... What irked you? I spent so much time transitioning uh, myself from saying dragon to drake. Like these are the mountain drakes, the ocean yeah. drakes, uh, and it's the elder dragon. Yeah. But uh, the announcer chick just said the dragon was slain. Mm. 
What? What's up with that? Where's her effort? <laughs> we'll it's Drake, game. lady. We'll have to get <laughs> an interview with her after the game. <laughs> Must have interview. Exclusively oh. seen here. Oh, oh long silence. Fight. Teleports are coming in. This is going to be a big one. Both teams have been waiting to open up the game here. Alltech looks to go down first. There is the Keeper's Verdict launching Shrimp out of the fight. Now it's someday looking to get the pocket pistol to go to work. But the rest of the team of Fox is able to organize perfectly. They orchestrate themselves back into a defensive position, and nothing happens. Yep. Nobody dies. So this is what happens when the disengage and the engage just goes for both teams. But Acadian, eh, walking right. around. A little bit of payoff here for Dig. They're going to grab that. OK. Yep, they're going to get that turret. They're going to even it up. So Echo Fox not sticking around because the Soraka just gets those low HP members back up to full. Oh, and they're giving it to Someday. And he's going to try to bounce it. Solo goal. Nice. Yeah, we haven't seen too many people taking the time to do that recently. They just kind of hit it, go, use the oh. gold somewhere else. Hello. Uh, he's going to gank this. It's going to be a two on two. It might. Shrimp. Shrimp is still there. Yep. They didn't really factor Shrimp into this equation just yet. One hit. He might be able to find Frog and just misses to the left. Oh, That's going to be the hit. Nope. Grievous Wounds, not an Ignite. He stays alive as a KD and limps away from this one. And it looks like Fox able to hold down the mid a little bit, but they'll have to wait for their tree. Yeah, Keen didn't want to ulti Frog in there because Froggen has two magic resist items, the Null and also the Merc Treads. So Banshee's Veil in his future here, but he's, like I was saying, counter building the Syndra mm -hmm. after the first attempt where his summoners went down. <laughs> But yeah, this was this was well played from Shrimp. This is actually, I feel like this is the perfect nice. engage. You get both of them on the silence, which means they're in a root, which means they get ulti back. But then the Janna ultimate comes in, heal, channel, channel, just heals everybody up. And then the Poppy ultimate gets Shrimp out before he gets another Q rotation. And then they're able to just push away. And someday went for a dive there onto the Janna. So Janna's just, it's going to get annoying for people who like to engage because Janna is here and she is anti-fun. Jan is here to stay, you're not. That's the way it works. It doesn't feel too good, especially when Gate can continue to pull this off. Pull this off. Adrian, great Jan the first game. Gate being able to pull out a lot there. The Howling Gale to stop Shrimp on the initiation and everything else at that split second. Still Echo Fox tied up with Dignitas in this one. The turret in their favor along with that kill. A turret first blood, I should say, along with that kill. Yeah, see like, how they work it. But look at both these mid laners in terms of CS. They're both at a very astounding mark right now. They're both above 10 per minute very early on. Steal and farm from other places with bad mid laner. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> it's all right. But like, trying to call them out. But when you look at that compared to like everything else in the game, you're going, okay, everybody else is like 130 CS. Uh, so when this mid laner shows up, they're just actually stronger than the other people in lane. So right now, you either want to get your mid laner a gigantic advantage, yep. uh, because then they're they're ahead of the other mid laner, but they're also ahead of everybody in the game. And even just kind of rotate them out of the lane. Just try to get one of these mid laners on a side lane, because even if the Syndra just keeps this pace up over the enemy AD carry, that ultimate is going to be enough, and his levels are going to be enough. Yep. Right now, look at that. It's level 12 to level 9 for the mid lane to the AD carries. Like, this is, this is the, these mid laners getting off the ground, trying to kill some kids. That's the thing that hurts too when the separation becomes so big. Usually it's not between the AD carry and a mid lane, but if your level's behind on what becomes the top laner, it feels like you're just hitting a steel wall all the time. Mm -hmm. You're almost healing the guy with your shots. Nice ejection off of Scarl there by Brandini, but still keeping it under the turret someday feels safe. One last hit. Scarl's back in action. So like right now, just to do like a little calculation. Yes. Uh, Keen Calculate. Or has already done uh, two penetration items. So he's at 42 magic penetration. And Keith has 45 magic resistance. So he's Ooh. almost doing true damage to him. It's very close. But then I look at Keen's ultimate with the rank two. The minimum damage on it is half of Keith, Keith's HP. Just a flat half. He's got 1,200 HP. The minimum right now for the Syndra is just over 500. And it's almost at that point. So if you put down a few balls, you throw down anything that hits him, you're going to be able to just bop him. Just bop him out. Big bopper. Froggen, however, as you said, his build path being cut in basically half. Merc Treads and that Null Magic Mantle to completely prevent death from this Syndra. Now as a haunting guys in those boots, you said the double pen items. He's only getting bigger. He's currently sitting just under a thousand gold at about 800 as he cleans up the next few waves. The team looks patient as well for the side of Dignitas. Happy to farm up. Someday back to the top side. 
Alltech will look to push for red and whatever else he can get in resources. One minute on to Baron, 16 seconds on to the Mountain Drake. Wow. So I just got informed that Gate is now purchasing the slowest sight stone purchase all year. Mm. <laughs> 17 minutes by Matt was the previous one. So when he does get it, we'll see what happens. Someday though, oh, not able to get him. And there's Acadian oh, trying to get Shrimp. to punch. Shrimp says let's bounce, but it's just a party for himself. As they get back to safety, Fox looks like they can work off this, knowing the ult's mm. down. That's quite a bit of pressure from Shrimp, but they have to be careful as well. Dig wants it just as much. So you know how people are like, you can play off meta support, but just buy a damn Sightstone. Is it reportable if they are playing a meta support and they don't buy Sightstone? I don't know. We'll see <laughs> what happens with Gate afterwards, but oh, in the wall, Shrimp's got a flat. Ooh, Shrimp gets bounced around a bit by Brandini. Nature's Grasp with a nice hug onto Dignitas. It's 4,600 on the Drake. They haven't really been focusing it too much, and Keith isn't really one to tear it down. Yeah, Brandini's wiggling right there, back and forth, kind of threatening, saying, I can do it, and he that, gets... Is that what a threatening Poppy does? They wiggle back and forth, and the whole all team tech, of starts tech. to wiggle here. Looking at all tech, he jumps over the wall with a bit of a dash. And Brandini goes down. There's the ultimate from Keen. Finally dropping one out of the game. He gets his first kill. So many low health bars for Dig. There's the finalizing kill from Keith in the one-two hit. And Dignitas now runs for the hills as Fox runs for mid lane. And they're going to go for that mid lane, like you said. Wave clear for Keen. Still up, though. We'll see if they're able to force this down. Not many flashes. Keen is going to have to play it pretty safe here. He does have a lot of wave clear, though. So Acadian's going to have to kind of put himself in a position to wow. threaten. And yeah, that's exactly how they do it. They push up and they get it. Echo Fox with two Mountain Drakes, and they're in a position that Dig was last game. And there, Fox is really prioritizing an itemizer. You'll see this one more time before I go into that. Yeah, good wall from Froggen. It catches the Shrimp again. on the other side. The Elastic Slingshot doesn't charge it immediately to go over because he wants to get back in. But then right there, into the wall, it's knocked to the side. So I don't think he actually eats a full stun there as well, but doesn't matter. Shrimp walks back up and Brandini, he's wiggling back and forth. You do this just to kind of change that range. And if a person steps forward as you step forward, you just kind of destroy them. And Brandini almost gets Alltech here with his W. It's just a second too late and Alltech gets out. But then right here, watch Keen. Brandini doesn't matter that this guy has 210 armor. He's got 50 magic resistance, five in the face of Keen. And so he just blasts the tank and someday doesn't get to remount in time. And Adrian went a little too far forward, but their backline got ejected. That was Brandini's ultimate, the big changer in that. And that's what I think about Poppy is like, why don't we see her more? Because she's good into some bruisers. Yep. Uh, she can stop these mobility carries. Stop the engage, and then also hold on. Though we'll talk about that in a second. These TP, oh, TP in coming in. It's a flank. Let's see what Froggen's flanking too. What's up? They can do Froggen over the wall. It's going to complete, locking them down. They lose Adrian. Wish is also down for another fight. They don't get to use it, but that's also going to be Acadian falling one for one on both sides. Echo now, Fox looking for the next shot as they take down someday. Echo Fox comes in strong on the fight and turn Dignitas away. And Echo Fox has got to be going finally. They win that fight. They're in the lead. They have two Mountain Drakes, and they have to respect that Keen has a lot of damage, and so does Alltech at this point. Gonna push mid. Froggen's gonna sit on a control ward and try to just make sure this doesn't go into the turret. The one minion makes it pass, but I don't think it's enough there to really change it too much. And he's gonna jump in onto the Talia. Says, let's go. He's gonna have the damage. Seismic shove would be quite a bit or almost too much oh, to it's deal with. 3,600 HP. Adrian just on the wing as he went down first. Won't be able to do too much other than Wish. There's, Does he keep him oh alive for long enough? They keep him off the Baron. This is what they wanted. Wish was just oh, used. Tech. Doesn't have too much more to offer. Oh. Start called the Froggen. Bananas Froggen down. Adrian comes in as the cavalry, bringing the potassium out. Oh, man. Echo Fox decided we're going to do the Baron anyway with one big damage dealer on it who hasn't really purchased and spent that gold that he got from the fight. <laughs> and uh, Adrian comes back, saves Alltech, who would have gone down there 100% if he hadn't made no it. No wonder he held Wish the last Right here, this fights. flank. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. This flank, they get Adrian, focus the Soraka. I actually really think that's the optimal strategy. Right. And then someday dives backline, gets pushed away by Gate, and then Acadian soaks a lot of damage, but he's able to do the damage with the CC. And now that they don't have... Uh, 
that smite. They're kind of hesitant to do it, but I feel like you still commit to it earlier than this if you are going to do it. And then Keen walks up, Frog in his kind of all overworked ground. So these aren't even full threaded volleys. He's throwing out one pumps, right? It's just one rock, one rock. Flashes away from Adrian, flashes to new un unworked ground, and then dips back. And all tech gets out of the way, and he would have died. 100%, he would have died there if Adrian had not made it back in time, and it had been a faster Baron. Ooh, someday shrimp not oh. feeling too bad to be across the wall. Froggen might leave Brandini and Acadian by themselves Altec. here. We'll see what happens. Steadfast Presence not they letting can't kill him in or out. Altec finally goes down in the middle. Shrimp's going to be the next one. Echo Fox is organizing themselves for these long fights, saying Brandini, Acadian, we can go for them because someday and Shrimp will live longer. Brandini is actually doing work on this Poppy. I don't know why we don't see her more, because that ultimate removes people from the fight and makes it a numbers advantage if you land it instantly. It's not, it has great combat power, and Brandini was able to smack Altec into the wall, remove high damage dealers from the fight, and now they're zoning, and Keith is the one dealing damage here. I feel like Froggen providing a lot of threat, but... Oh, Gate. There's AoE damage. He's already taken a little bit. He has that passive on him from the Baron. They're going to stay alive. Fox grabs Baron 25 minutes in. We'll see how this started here. Echo Fox just pulls the trigger. Yep, frogging with the wall. But they see Brandini here. I think that's a ward on oh, the side. Yeah, no, the control ward came down. And yeah, Altec gets hit into the wall, tries to deal damage. He's getting dealed here by Adrian. And then they remove Keen, who didn't get to ulti in that fight at the start at all. And that would have put a lot of threat onto Keith. That would have changed the whole thing. And Brandini removing that big amount of gold from the fight and that big burst potential is huge. You see all the damage. Yeah. Do you have three members doing that? But when the Syndra does 1,100 and had ultimate still available, Ooh. you know there's more in that tank, and she was removed very quickly from that yep. fight. Keith as well, within that build path quite a while ago, the Executioner's Calling now on top of the Hell of Arrows, kind of hurting Adrian's heels with all of the Grievous Wounds that are kind of being pushed on to yeah, take the top. Yeah, Morellonomicon, all that. Uh, that um, Morellonomicon too, on yep. that HP. A Sight Stone was purchased eventually hey. from Gate. He got it, so. <laughs> I thought things got a little brighter. I mean, Arden Sensor. <laughs> If you guys are just going to group and fight, I guess it works for, for you, sure. as long as you have it before the other guy. And I've noticed this with Adrian, is he actually kind of delays his Ardent Sensor a little bit. He goes for the Redemption still. He did this yesterday as well. Yeah. Um, He's all about the heals. Yeah, it was really strange. It wasn't even on Soraka, I believe. I think it was Janna, and he still went for it first. I think it was Janna. Um, and it was just kind of the, the odd man out for me, because I feel like Ardent Sensor is just so powerful once you get it. Well, he's going to get it. So it'll be... I see what you're saying. I'm just kidding. 27 here. 8 to 3. Echo Fox definitely putting a few more kills on the board from last game. Oh, yeah. We had only about 7 total, and the, the last few came at the Nexus fight. And here we are inside the base. Will Acadian be big enough for the team to come up behind him? Brandini, nice shot on two members of Dig. He is always grabbing two in that Keeper's Verdict. Making sure that they disengage, and I love this from him so far. Poppy did well in the lane phase. It's a good pick for this situation as well. Art sensor from the ultimate there to give him some extra attack speed, but mostly just to heal everybody up so they don't have to back. And they're gonna back. <laughs> Triple Mountain Drake for Fox. So the Talia wall, whenever it's up, they should be able to push for getting that down and getting to those turrets. But right there, they got uh, got Shrimp instead and forced Keen away. Hmm. Clean up around Baron. Let's we'll see if Dignitas can put Fox in a bad situation because right now that's what has to happen. Echo Fox has been moving very well, taking tempered fights, but always once it's in their advantage. Let's say the mid one was too tempered, but they did know they had the lead on that. That's exactly what we need to see from Echo Fox here at the end of the split, especially with throwing Keith in this game 6-0-2 coming in kind of like cold off the bench and starts warming up very fast. And he's against a Syndra. I mean, like being an AD carry and being against a Syndra, <laughs> you at least think you're going to die at least once, maybe to, uh, if, 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 even if you're having a good Him game. and Gate staying alive. So yeah. props to that bot lane. And I like this, the uh, Phantom Dancer yeah. for him. Uh, usually you would see something uh, more closer to, you know, the uh, Moon Dance Hurricane, but besides, all right, it's time for not stacking 
My Blighted Quiver on everybody, just living. Hasn't defied any deaths just nope. yet. Keep track on that. Yeah. <laughs> Has he used it yet? Shrimp, where is Shrimp? I gotta find him real quick. He has actually not used the Knight's Vow. Maybe waiting to find where Alltech is to put that on somebody. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. He must have just gotten it. And it's a bad situation for Dignitas. They're gonna have to look for something in terms of uh, clever engage. Uh, but Brandini has been a menace. He's hard to remove. He has both resistances now. There's the wall. There's the triple mountain Drake to try and chunk this out. Oh, oh Brandini. Shrimp ready to get on the back line, but is the team ready to hit it? He finds Keith. And the back Whoa. line isn't enough. Huge damage coming through. Brandini gets himself out. He's out. And a frog in delivering that with a seismic shove and the unraveled earth. Dignitas bought right into that one. And Echo Fox again is able to limp away on this. Shrimp. Are able to yep. get Shrimp on the backside once they close him out from his passive. And they're right back to the base. Yeah, they were able to actually play two different fights there in terms of skirmishes. Brandini went onto the bottom side with a Kadian and Froggen, and Froggen was the big difference maker there. He brought enough damage to bring Adrian low and kill him, even though Adrian was almost turning that completely around. Yep. And that's inhibitor for Echo Fox. They're gonna keep pushing. Someday feeling like he can fight a little bit. What a turnaround coming into the second game here for Echo Fox. 11 to three, looks like they realize those are the finishing touches on the top lane for now. They're going to be able to come back. A minute and a half on Baron as well. Get the wards recharged. Seems like they'll need that vision here. Yeah, and you're going to see what happens with the damage and how it's distributed here. Because Brandini's going to go in, get a three-man knockup afterwards. He almost dies, like, right off the back. Altec has to flash, saves his W until afterwards, and then right there, all the damage goes into Brandini, but Froggen was the one to get them towards the wall. And then there was a two on two -oh on the side of Shrimp and Someday. But the Monsoon, the Janna, keeps them safe. Janna, anti-fun zone. Nobody gets to get kills over here. And then they're able to trail off, wait for the re-engage. And that's why when you have a, a lower numbers fight, you on one side in terms of a skirmish, if you're the two on two, your job is mostly to survive if you're winning the three on three. And that's what they did. They tried to survive for long enough that the recollapse comes through after a kill. All right. A little bit of a reset for what that's worth. Just both teams out in the middle of the map. Nothing really reset on either part. Things very intense at the moment as Dignitas is trying to stave off their base from getting taken down. One inhib now down they have to deal with. They're going to meet that super minion very far out so they can push up a few Baron wards. 30 seconds on the next two objectives. Yep. Dignitas is going to look towards this Scuttle Crab and Control. And Shrimp, you got to use your Knight's Bow. He's had it for five yeah. minutes now. He's it's had it since 27, 27 minutes. minutes. Come he on. He hasn't bound to anybody. Why, ban why bind to somebody? It just kills you faster. No one's knightly enough. <laughs> He's like, I will wear the crown. <laughs> why would I want to die faster? This item kills me. Hey, Katie and Keith, they're yeah. going to go. Right yep. hand man. I mean, Gargoyle Stoneplate also completed for Brandini. Yeah. So I, I feel like Brandini's in a great spot to just dive in. Not get blown up. We'll see what his magic resistance is right now. 104. Of course, Poppy's passive will help him when he's lower. Below 40%, so it's just under half where it kicks in and gets another 14. A lock onto Akkadian. That's actually some pretty good damage from Keen. One ball there obviously healed up by the Maokai passive. Yeah, if Keen can reach yeah. uh, one hurt. of the squishies, if he can reach him, then he can blow him up. Keith, I'm pretty sure he still does true damage to Keith. Yeah, he still does true damage to Keith. There's the wall. They're separated. This is the all about split fights. Echo Fox are saying, all right, Weaver's wall is going to split a fight. We're going to have Poppy also Whoa. split fights. Grandini says, I can 2v1. They get three people now over there. Adrian, Shrimp, and Keen in one fight. Someday now, all Frog, and in the 1v1, all tech goes for a ride. He gets himself now to safety after that, and they pinch up now, pushing Dignitas towards the wrong side of the map. Fox. Somebody's got a TP in, try to get something here. Yeah, he just went back looking Hello? for the home guard. Hello, team. All tech pushing up, trying to assist. Are they going to regroup? They the are going to regroup. Gun to shrimp. Oh, Keen actually taking that now. He took a lot of damage, but Adrian. Whoa. Ah. He's TPing on a ward as well, so they yep. know how to recoup on this for the moment. But it's still for the fight. I love it. Both teams now ah. giving up. Gate's going to go for the big heal there. And now the reset is actually in favor yep. of Echo Fox. 
Shrimp Fro has... Froggen's on the side. Froggen's sitting on a control ward. He's gonna try to flank. He's gonna try to kill Adrian, even, who, even though he can't really contribute too much more. He's gonna try to push them off to the side. They've started the Baron. Adrian can't join. There's the engage. Shrimp locked onto Keen, Keen. with that Knight's Foul. That's why he's been putting himself farther up front to look for that damage reduction, look for his hit. It does not happen. And can they turn it around without that Syndra damage? Acadian in and out with the twisted advance to try and dodge some damage himself. They know someday slow. They now know slow. left, halfway up to the bar, Scarl hiding in the brush next to him, but he may not be able to get enough for him to come back out. Dignitas pulls off, and <laughs> I think they have just eventually lost his Baron. Uh, Adrian trolling a little Prince bit there. Gonna stay. Yeah, yeah, you stay, but you can't really steal with Brandini there. Yeah. That decision about as questionable as that. That was, the, that was what was going on in the mind of Shrimp there. Echo Fox looking pretty happy about that situation. You see the turret going down. You get all the views. And that happy, was be happy Echo Fox. Two turrets down from Winions. That's you usually yeah. see that from a double lane. One lane to get a single hit of Super Minion, that's actually pretty mm -hmm. incredible that they were able to hold Dignitas on the map that long. Yeah, that was a long time before people got to back and spend money or you know, regroup. It was kind of just all focused on this one area, and that's going to be Echo Fox having both of those Nexus turrets down, the Baron, the three Mountain Drakes, and they're going to get their fourth Drake of the game. You know what? Screw it. Dragon. She says it, I can say it. It's named the Dragon. Yeah, you got it. You're right. You're right. Maybe you can revoice that for us. Yeah. 62 to 55, we'll say. Round up a little bit for Dignitas here. A great lead for Echo Fox and holding on to it very well, pressuring it into new options to get a better lead. They haven't really been slowed down as of yet, and that's kind of the worry here as we see Echo Fox being able to handle early game leads, but putting that into the close or the ending game and closing the game out has been difficult. Yeah, it's always those final touches. Keith actually has the most gold in the game right now. Still zero deaths to five. Gate's been able to keep him healthy. Ardent Sensor, Mikhail's Both Redemption, of them, Janna. 11 in the yeah. participation area. Out of the 12, and same with Froggen. He's been Crazy. 11 out of those 12. Team's been grouping up. Froggen with the ultimate. He could have sectioned oh, it off. He died in that 12. Brandini's got all dead. And turret goes down, whoa! That was Keith with the Chain of Corruption All first. Alltech falls just as fast, and Dignitas is actually trying to figure out Thinking how Fox is moving this quick. Brandy's gonna, gonna hit him away. A few more seconds. Oh! He gets silenced out. Equinox shuts down the Keeper's Verdict. He'll have that in a bit of a cooldown. Into the fountain! And into the fountain they go! That's not the party that he wants. Keith gonna keep himself alive. Keep going back, and he does heal himself off the art and sensor shield coming in huge. And it looks like they'll be able to finalize a few last kills. They say, Dignitas, you stayed here for a while to play with your food. We'll do the same thing, too, before they bring it to a game three. Keen goes down as well. Someday tries to find Solace on the fountain, and he will try to come off to stop the last bit of damage for Fox. They will put the bit of gold in their pocket as they take down the Nexus. And 37 minutes in, 16-5, oh. to 5, Echo Fox bring it to a game three over Dignitas. And they subbed in Keith, made the difference there. Gate with the protection, and Keith, honestly, that first kill in the bottom lane off of Alltech jumping in really put them ahead. And then they rotated, got to the top side, took that first turret, and then Dignitas playing catch up the entire time. And when they got frustrated and tried to engage, that's the beauty of Janna, is when a team gets slightly ahead with Janna, the other team says, we need to engage, we need to go. And Janna shuts that down. So and, much. Exactly. And so they started grouping, saying what Dig wants to do is they don't want to out macro us because like we didn't see the same type of all tech split push, like be in right. side lane, try to get that turret like Mark Z was talking about. It was more of we have to find these fights now with our Zac and also abuse our Syndra and our Kled engage. Uh, and they saw that coming. Yeah. Fox Gate actually delaying his sight stone for the longest that we've seen so far in the split. Uh, and then having the Janna for the disengagement, every time they tried it, he was like, nope. And by the way, Ardent Sensor, before you have really anything that helps this team fight. Saw that so coming into play longer. at the end. Absolutely crazy. Great stuff coming in from Echo Fox to bring it to a game three. And for a deeper dive on that game, let's hand it off to Dash and Mark.
Thank you very much, gentlemen. Very different story here in game two to game one. Again, very low kill win for Dignitas playing the map very smartly in game one. Here in game two, Echo Fox strike back in order to extend us to a third game. Let's take a look at Champ Select because once again, we're seeing the trade. Zach giving away to the blue side so that a Maokai can be picked up for the red side. And I still think Zach is probably a little bit too strong to risk doing this consistently with, but I do like what they had in store for it, both with the Poppy and the Janna being great for disengage again. Mm. It makes it very hard for the Zac to really land in a fight and then use his ultimate to drag people out. It, took, it, was, it was almost never a time where Shrimp got a good access to the back line. Uh, similarly, they have a, a fantastic front line in Maokai and Poppy together. So I like the team comp overall, and I, I like that uh, what they were looking to do with this. It was just that it felt like it went a little slower than was necessary. Right. And I, I don't really love the Soraka pick. But it showed forethought, right? Yes. It's the point here with Echo Fox that they had a plan for letting something through that is largely considered to be one of the strongest champions on this patch. Explain Explain to me a little bit why you're not sold on the Soraka pick, whereas a Janna is okay. So Soraka uh, is traditionally considered a great counter pick into Janna in laning phase. Mm -hmm. She just has a hard time doing anything about what uh, Soraka is going to do. You're just going to poke her down slowly over time. Uh, I feel like some of those advantages have been slightly negated with the Ancient Coin helping out a lot with... Uh, Janna sustain and just being able to stay healthy easier, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that we saw all these Doran Shield stuff going on. Uh, I think the other thing too is just in the current meta, her team fight is just so so weak. Even if she is constantly topping people off, uh, this is like a super super front like tanky front line. You know what hurts Soraka? Bramble vest. Yeah. Tanks now have the ability to apply Grievous Wounds, so I think to your point, it can it, it immediately nerfs her team fight presence, where she used to be great against tanks who couldn't out DPS her healing. Now the healing's nerfed by the tanks, and there is enough DPS to eventually eat through it. And, and then even just like other, you know, relatively low impact supports in team fights like a Karma and a Lulu, at least still have a little bit more going on in the mm -hmm. team fight. She is literally, I'm just gonna try and keep people healthy. Right. And, and there's it, no repositioning as a result of the Mantra E shield. Or or something like that. There's no, as you mentioned, disengage from the Janna tornadoes or the monsters. There's like one nice silence on a poppy that she hit maybe once. That was the first time I noticed her doing anything other than topping people off. In right. Fight. It's very hard to have a big impact, and we are in a relatively high, uh, you know, support. playmaking support meta. Exactly. So it's signature Adrian pick doesn't work out this time around. Let's jump into a replay real quick. 22 minutes into the game, an extended Baron dance here going to go in the favor of Echo Fox. A really nice wall that they combo together with uh, the poppy knock into the it's wall. It's like the Anivia poppy that we saw back at world yeah a little well. bit like that but Talia's stronger in the meta of course so i really like that idea mm -hmm. uh brandini had a great game overall just with this poppy finding multiple stuns uh and opportunities to knock people out of fights as well he's had a couple of those and there you see just good uh you know focus with uh frog and being able to get that stun eventually they they start this baron off again they're baiting it out frog gets jumped on a little bit here uh has to kite it out almost gets killed by keen but they're still focused on the baron and they keep you know, just burning this one down. All right, let's talk about this Poppy pick, though, too, because it's not the first time we've seen it come out. We've seen it in the Camille matchup a few times, uh, as well as elsewhere. Uh, in, I mean, yes, tanks are relevant. Tanks are strong right now, but Poppy, where does she fall, in your opinion? Uh, I think it's one thing that you might see come up a little bit more just because it is a team fight champion not that abusable in lane, probably not quite as strong as some of the other ones, but it is something that when you get to team fights, it has a huge impact. That wall stun is huge. The knockout of team fights, great. Uh, with the other p champions that are high engaged, her W actually becomes very valuable. So not just on something like a Zac can you can you stop them from getting involved, but you know even a Kled's dash in with his E can get bounced out. There, there's so many different ways that that can work if you're playing against Sejuani. Her Q gets negated. A lot of stuff actually becomes very difficult to play into Poppy. Brandini on that Poppy will pick up player of the game this time around. Again, uh, you know, kind of keeping them in it in that early game, making sure he's doing the work he needs to do in those team fights, ejecting some key members, playing against that Zach who they know if they let him engage fully can really turn a fight. Yeah, and you, even the ones that got them Baron, he was heavily involved in pretty much every time he was finding his way onto backline members, whether it was Adrian, Apollo, or, or even Keen at different points. So he, he had a, a, just a fantastic performance, as well as the fact that he did have to pick a, a, a team-focused champion, and the whole Zach leaving it up to get the Maokai was basically enabled by the fact that he could play this champion. All right, Gate gets the honorable mention there, but I'm going to turn our attention to game two, or not, rather game three here, because Echo Fox, they get to jump back to blue side. So grabbing the win on red side definitely have some things opened up for them in terms of pick ban phase on the blue side. How does Dignitas respond to try and close it out strong and continue their push up the standing? It's a little bit of a weird one because you end up with so many more OPs here, like with the Zac coming through and then the Maokai as well. If Dignitas ends up back on, on red side and they just go, you know, Get Maok rid of those yeah, Maokai, Caitlyn, Zac, 
fact, then this this kind of idea that you're baiting them into something kind of goes out the window, as well as the fact that if the enemy team does go Janna again, I would not expect to see the Sirocco for the second time. All right, well, with the series all tied up, let's see if Echo Fox can keep their playoff hopes alive in Game 3 versus Team Dignitas. Meet us here after the break.